This is the Prophet's Couch, and my name is Prophet Johnny Numa. I'm the senior pastor of the Apostolic Movement Church. And this, I bring you good news and God's blessings live from Apostolic TV. And I believe your life is not going to remain the same, remain the same after this in Jesus' name. Now, without further ado, break your Bibles with me. You are going straight into the world. Hallelujah. Like I said, tonight is three nights with the prophet. Please, if you, if you have testimonies, don't, don't hesitate to share your testimonies. Let me know if you have testimonies. Hallelujah. God bless you. She said, I'm live. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. Now, this is three nights with the prophet. I want you to get yourself ready. Umbua Lambert, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Now, break your Bibles with me quickly. Break your Bibles with me. To Jeremiah chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4. Just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get myself back. I've, I've, well, <laughs> there's some intense prayer where, where we're dissecting some, some things in the spirit in prayer. I'm just trying to come and bring myself back here. God bless you, Ama. Ama Oduro. God bless you, Ama. Ama Oduro. God bless you. I see you too. God bless you. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 4. Laka Talagadash. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1 verse 4. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying. Verse 5. Let's go straight to verse 5. Verse 4 says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying. Verse, four says, verse 5 says, Before I formed thee, before I formed you in the womb, KJV says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And KJV says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. KJV says, before I formed thee in the belly. Someone say, in the belly. Someone say, in the belly. Someone say, in the belly. Shalagash, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I knew thee. I knew thee. God bless you, Janice Charles. I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Father, we thank you for the reading of the word. I salute you. It has been released. Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, move mightily. Touch your people by the entrance of the world tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, on this first night of three nights with the prophets, on this first night of three nights with the prophets, I am here to start with a message titled, The Prophet is Called. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Mama said, hmm, he's heavy, isn't it? The Prophet is Called. Jalakata Jelegesh. There are three lines packaged, prepared, seasoned, and packaged for your life. And the first of these three lines is titled The Prophet is Called. Someone said 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 the prophet is called. Ladies and gentlemen, when we define and look at the word called, it means that there is someone who is the caller who has requested and attracted, but most importantly, caught the attention of the colleague. The caller and the colleague. The colleague receives the call from the caller. When the colleague, C A L L E E, accepts the telephone call, it means he's now called. He's been called. Ladies and gentlemen, there are things to know about prophets. 
A prophet is not someone you train. You don't train for to be a prophet. <laughs> you are either called for it. Or you are not at all. I'm going somewhere this night and I want you to catch teaching tonight. Call your friends and families. After these teachings, many of you will engage the prophetic man tool like never before. The prophet is called. Prophets are not people you send to university to go get qualification to prophesy. That is prophet lying or cooking up stories for impression. Prophets are not people you impact on. Prophetic anointing does not come by impartation. I can impart you to prophesy does not make you a what? A prophet. Meaning prophets are prepared purposely for the prophetic move. Prophets are cooked in the womb nine months for the sole purpose of what? Prophecy. Prophets are prepared nine months in the womb for the sole purpose of the edification of the church through the prophetic mantle that God has placed upon them in their life from before they were formed in their mother's womb. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4, says that the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before I formed you, I knew you. Meaning before the physical man is formed, the mantle has been waiting. The mantle picks candidate. You don't pick the mantle. Kadash. You can be saying, but prophet, Elisha picked the mantle from Elijah. No, Elisha didn't pick the mantle from The mantle dropped for Elisha to pick. The mantle picked Elisha. The Elisha didn't pick the mantle. That is why Elijah told Elisha, if you see me being taken away by the chariots, then you will receive this. You will receive what you are asking for. But the story goes that even when ay, 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 Elisha saw the chariot of Israel taking Elijah away, the mantle then did not drop. Elisha cried, my father, my father, the chariot, after crying. That was when the mantle dropped. The mantle selected him because there was a formation of a new prophet. The process by which Elisha followed Elijah was the prophet of was the process of his rebirth. Was the place of his rebirth. Elisha already had the call of the prophetic. But to double what he carried, he needed what Elijah carried. Elisha said, I want double portion of your spirit. Meaning, I want to do greater things. So, Elisha asked Elijah for what Elijah carried. I'm going somewhere this night. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, meaning number two, prophets are not called by men. Prophets are called by God. Men don't call prophets. Mm -mm. Men don't call prophets. God called from prophets and placed them in the drum of the anointing of the prophetic. Then launches them out. I'm going somewhere. Before I formed you in the womb, verse 5, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Some people will not like this message because why many people think they are prophetesses and prophets. <laughs> Alabosh. Many people think that they are called. Many people think that they are, uh, they are called prophets by God. Because you have one dream does not make you a prophetess. If you have two dreams, does not make you a prophet. Because you, you prophesy once doesn't make you a prophet. Prophets are born. The genetics of a prophet's existence is to prophesy. The genetics of a prophet's existence is to prophesy. The wave of a prophet is prophetic. The dance of a prophet is prophetic. The speech of a prophet is prophetic. The movement of a prophet's body is prophetic. The stretch of a prophet is prophetic. 
the step of a prophet is prophetic. The genetic formation of the being you see, everything is prophetic. Before you were formed, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Before. Meaning before the before the career, before the prophet even realizes a prophet is a prophet. <laughs> before the career realizes a prophet is a prophet. Am I, am I communicating here? When people don't understand what they are dealing with, they abuse it. The greatest ministry that is attacked in our generation and generations prior to now is the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. Jesus looked at Jerusalem from afar and he screamed, Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, thou killers of the what? The prophets. Before the arising or arrival of the apostles, the prophets were there. Meaning the prophetic ministry is the oldest ministry. Before priests were prophets. After priests are still prophets. Before apostles were prophets. The most dangerous ministry is the prophetic ministry. That's why the devil is doing all that he can to, to, to fight and cripple the prophetic movement. But that devil is a bastard because why? In Labagadash, a prophet is an oracle of the living God. A prophet is the, is, is the voice of God when he enters a place. Izala Kadadash Bregadesh. There is nothing like school of prophets. You come to the school of prophets, you pay $1,000 and you are taught how to prophesy. In this series, I'll be speaking and revealing prophets in our generation. You should avoid. I'll call their names. I know that it's going to cause trouble. I know that it's going to cause things. But... Uh, <laughs> Nobody cares. I have heard people, like I said, should I carry on? Yes, <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Let me take off one button. <laughs> there, is a, there is a prophet from Zimbabwe who is fooling people. What is his name, Seth? It's so irrelevant, I can't even remember his name. What's that one's name? They always flash money like he's a nightclub owner. Oh God. Uh, he prophesied that uh, Bushiri will die, that one will die, this one will die. Uh -huh. There is a prophet called Passion Java. Number one is not a prophet, it's a schoolboy, and it's just someone. Like I said, it's three nights with a prophet. I'm dealing with everything prophetic prophet, prophetic, prophecy. We're ready. He is not a prophet. Tell them, whoever knows him, tell him that Prophet John Enuma, a.k.a. Kingdom Dynamite, I'm based in the UK. Tell him I said that God said he's not a prophet. He should pack his self to one place and go open a nightclub. He's not called by God. He's not a prophet at all. He's a businessman using a gift to make money for himself should i carry on this night like i said these three nights i didn't come to play i know what i have prayed my eyes is red people might not want to might not like me after this i don't like you too he's not a prophet A prophet that tells you and said, I will teach you how to see numbers. I will teach you. That is witchcraft. You don't teach prophetic.
Alléluia. Et prophète. That celebrates himself. I'm going to, this period, these three nights, a lot of things will explode. I'm starting. There are those who are called prophets. There are those wannabes. There are those who were once prophets, but God fired them already. But they are using past glory. And I'm coming to you, Beth Angel, very soon. Like I said, many people might not like me. But go and tell some of them that they are foxes and they need to get out of the altar. Jakatash. If someone like Bushiri carries on with you, but angel, Bushiri will end up in hell. Because you bet angel has been fired by God. He's using past glory for current ministry. Like I said, it will cause trouble. Three nights with the prophets. Every prophet of God is meant to bring the mind of God. Stop looking at fashionistas and uh, noise makers and people leading people to hell. Calling them men of God. You bet angel. Yes, started. But he lost it. So if in our generation, if truly you want to grow in the prophetic, you want to grow in the Lord, that is not a, that's not a role model. There is someone called Makandiwa. It's an example. And a modeled prophet. Someone called Makandiwa. I'm going somewhere. Shall I carry on? <laughs> uh, my, 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 my wife is cringing behind the scene like, Prophet, what have you done? What, I, what, what is this series about? Like I said, it was three nights with the prophets. We are dealing with some things tonight. Some people will not like me after this. But like I said, if you don't like me after this, I don't like you too. It's you I'm addressing. There is someone called Benny In. It says he moved in the prophetic. He's not a prophet. He just flows in the prophetic. He too, he lost it two years ago. He's trying to find his way back because Benin is about to die. We are going somewhere. How should I carry on? Like I said, a lot of people will not like me after this. Like I said, but I don't care. Because the Bible says, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Ola Kokosh. Izala Dadash. There is commons called Kofi Danso. Kofi Danso. Toronto, Canada. He is called by God. He is a prophet. Kofi Danso is called by God. He is a prophet. But his mistake. Is that he's not discerning people that want to take advantage of him for money and resources. But what has been keeping Confidanso is that the Lord said, Confidanso has the heart of a David. He says, he's a man after my heart. I'm still going far. There is someone called Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Is a prophet. Is an oracle and a man of genuine oil for our time. Anybody that want to get angry, come and fight me. Because you try to we die by correction. Lapadash. The time of others come for the church and it's time. There are many, many, many dirty South African prof Southern African region prophets. I would, some of them are done, they are so irrelevant to mention their name. Some I don't, I'm not even interested in their names. Some of them are playing gimmicks with the altar. Everything now. Many people are excited when a man is calling your name. 
your number. That is not prophecy. That is word of knowledge. There's a difference. Well, this is three nights with the prophets. We are going somewhere. We are building the case. When a, 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 a man of God, we say, is walking on air from his, from his stairs down. And they said there are angels in church and everybody is jumping. I'm not fighting anybody, please. I'm bringing our attention to something. Prophets should be modeled being, not perfect being. Because no one can be perfect. We are pressing towards perfection every day. We pressing to be perfect. So it's, it's a standard we, by grace, are pressing towards. But when you meet people who are businessmen and not genuine, if I don't speak, then I will be accountable one day before God. I'm not looking for fame. Keep cheap fame. If I wanted cheap fame, I'd have gotten it two years ago, three years ago. We're talking about something important. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Galatians chapter number 6. Galatians chapter 6. Open your Bible. Go open your Bibles with me. Galatians. No, no, no. Let, let, let's, I think it's Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. We'll come back to Galatians shortly. Ephesians 4. Let, let's go to Ephesians 4 firstly. We'll come back to Galatians shortly. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Ephesians 4 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles. He himself gave some. He himself gave some to be apostles. And some prophets. And some prophets. And some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. He gave them in portions apostles, and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. One of the heresies we are hearing this day and age is that there's nothing like prophet anymore after Christ. Those kind of people should go to hell. They know nothing about the Bible. If you are liking, if you are liking what you are hearing, please thumbs up quickly. If you don't like, you can thumbs down and get off my scope. The psalm he gave apostles to some prophets, to some teachers, to some evangelists, to some pastors. Understand something, ladies and gentlemen. If you read the same Ephesians chapter number 4 and go straight to verse 12. It says, for the equipping of the saints for the work of what? Ministry. Look at what KJV says. KJV translation says, it says for the perfecting of the saints. NKJV says for the equipping. It says, for the perfecting of the saints. You see, perfecting, continuous presence, what? Action. For the work of the ministry. But most importantly, for the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body of Christ. I stand here to speak to you on a title and a topic a message titled what the prophet is called the prophet is called i speak not without covering i minister under the grace of my father and the man that prophesied my birth archbishop benson idaosa Blessed memories. Let's act bishop. Blessed memories. And I stand fully under the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. To speak what is the truth today. And let God justify his word. There are many jokers from 
prophets in Ghana, they call themselves prophets. Waste of time, witchcraft, voodoo, cultic men. They are not servants of God. There is one in South Africa. Is it J Israel or Israel J, whatever his name is? That is just a petty baby boy who is throwing, throwing his toys out of the pram because he was refused breast milk. He needs to go and sit down. He doesn't know what he is to be a prophet. Because you can see certain things doesn't make you a prophet of God. But it is funny that the church, this generation, we are looking for entertainers. We are not looking for the truth anymore. Like I said, I'm not bashing. This is not a bashing platform. It's three nights with the prophets. And I'm here to deliver what is the truth. I stand to be corrected by the Spirit of God at any point. But as of this moment... I stand on what I believe is the truth. A lot of people are lost. A lot of people are shredding. One idiot sent a message and a video of a, a J Israel to my to the church line the other day. I don't know what kind of jobless person that is. It's three nights with the prophet. Listen. I'm, I'm not preaching. There's no constructive message here. I'm ministering to deliver the truth. Because tomorrow is another dimension. Sunday is another dimension. There are different people who call themselves prophets for different reasons. Understand me, ladies and gentlemen. The prophetic ministry is a very dangerous ministry. The prophetic mantle, let me tell you something, those that will be judged the most are those that move in the power ministry. Follow me. It's, it's three, it's please, it's, it's like, a, it's three nights of what? Three nights with what? With the prophets. So, I am not here to preach constructive messages. I'm yet to discuss. I'm yet to teach as I'm te as it's coming. I'm yet to speak. Prof just let bring, open your eyes to many things. After tonight, after these three nights, I expect some of you to go and delete some prophet pictures off your page that you're following and celebrating the devils. There are some people who don't call themselves prophets, but they're actually prophets of God in this time. One of them is in America. It's called Dr. Rodney. He's not a prophet, but he's operating right now as a prophet to the American nation. Trying to bring order and the mind of God for this current time and in this situation for America. Because the prophets have cowed into hiding. Cowed! At some point in time, there was someone called Brian Khan. Brian Khan is genuinely called by God, but he missed his way. He's only trying to find himself back. He's not found himself back. Brian Khan missed his way so much that the Spirit of God left him. He's only fighting. And Tell Brian Khan I said so. He knows what I'm talking about. He's only, he's, he's still finding, he's trying to find that secure place again. We need the holies of holies. He's trying to press deep into the realm that he wants you to fellowship with the Lord. He's seeking that place. He hasn't yet found it again. Because he diluted unknowingly himself with the wrong crowd. I'm going, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. In America, the only man right now speaking as a true prophet of God, even though he doesn't call himself a prophet, is Dr. Rodney. What's his full name? That, guy, that man. No. Dr. Rodney Howard. That's the only man. And I think I spoke about him even about three weeks ago. About three weeks ago. It's the only man speaking the mind of God to that nation right now. Right now. T.D. Jake should go and sit down. All those men should go and sit down. 
Hollywood stars on the altar. They think about their money, their image, their pockets. Damn! The mind of God. And I said, I'm speaking this night. I'm not here to please you. If you don't like my scoop, get off my channel. But if you want the truth, listen. This is three nights to speak. There are people who come to church. They look for prophecies. They look for prayer requests to be answered. Oh, man of God. Man of God, man of God. Oh, 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 man of God, man of God, man of God. Um, I want, I, I, I need you to speak over my life. I'm trusting God for this contract and this contract. But when the prophet starts praying for you, they give you a different information. But you see those people, they get, they get very upset that the prophet did not tell them about what they really wanted, but is telling them about something else. A true prophet of God don't pray for you because of what you want to hear. They tell you what God wants you to know. They bring you into the now word from God for your life at that point. A woman met a prophet and wanted the prophet to prophesy about politics and business and other things. The prophet told her, woman, go and sack your driver. And that's all the prophet said and walked, and walked away. The woman was so annoying, started talking rubbish about the, the, about, the pro, about the man of God. Can you imagine this man of God? He's a fake man of God. He's a fake prophet. How can I go him? How can I go to him and he cannot tell me about what I want? Uh, 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 he cannot tell me what, what I want him to tell me. He cannot tell me what I want to see. He cannot tell me what I want to hear. He cannot tell me what I want him to tell me. Instead, he's telling me to go sack my driver. I'm talking about business and money. He's telling me to sack my driver. Few days later, it was on the tele tele television news that the woman, being driven by the same driver, the driver took her somewhere where he was alone with her, killed her, butchered her in two pieces, tied her in the bag, and buried her. Where is the business today? Where is the money today? Where is the contract she was looking for today? But I'm sure after she left that prophet, she went to a so-called prophet that said, don't worry, God will make you a millionaire. God will do this one. God will do that one. God will do this one. A true prophet that does not edify you with this prophecy is not of God. J. Israel is making noise up and down. He's become an advocate of the devil. Become a tool in the hands of the devil. Talking nonsense and idiots are listening to it. If I catch you sheer nonsense about that person on my platform, I will block you, ban you, and curse you. It's not, it's not, that's not a prophet. That's a fox. F-O-X. Tell that fox! Jesus said. Tell that fox! It's not the prophet. When you were eating and dining and the fathers were giving you platform to shine, they were your fathers. Isn't it funny that the people that matter have not responded to him because it's irrelevant? But you have Christians who will have the audacity. One person shared it to, me, to the church line and someone, they had me brought it to me. I said, look at what someone shared. It shows that that person is also an idiot. Any prophet that suddenly has taken the place of God through his ministrations, in his ministration, during his ministration, is not a prophet of God. Because with, if you have the, conscience of the consciousness of God during your ministration as a prophet, you can, never, you can never take the place of God in ministry. Because if you are a prophet of God, you are only his mouthpiece. So if he stops speaking, there will be nothing projecting through you. Understand me, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't come online to bash. I want to open your eyes to things. 
You bet Angel has traveled all over. He's left South Africa, left Zimbabwe. He's now in England for what? To increase his money and fool people that are blind and deaf to the word of God. Like I said, he was once called genuinely, but he missed it. He needs to go and find, find his path back. That is why you see him jumping from pillar to post today. Someone is his father, tomorrow another person is his father. You don't have two fathers in life. You have one father. One man, two men cannot give birth to one child. You can't say someone is your father. That when you think you've seen him finish, you're jumping to the next one to use him. I pity Chris Oyaki Lome. When he's done with him, he's jumped to someone else. A man, like I said, if you don't like my school, get off. I'm not, I'm not meant to be friends with anybody. It's three nights with Prophet John Enuma. Not so. I've come from the place of prayer. I'm talking here. God told me to put order in this nation again. I am one of the gatekeepers of the United Kingdom spiritually. And I'm not going to allow any devil in suit come and mislead the, the, the people. People are using perception to deceive you. And you follow such. When a man calls himself the godfather of the prophetic, my brother, my sister, you go there and you are, he's laying hand on you. He's, he's introducing you to idolatry and a coven. There's not, nobody's no godfather. Elijah didn't call himself a godfather. Elisha didn't call himself a godfather. Even in Elisha's grave, his bone was Ija. Jadali Katosh was still healing people that were dead. Elisha's bone, he had no title of a godfather. Then one small man, a mere mortal man, mere mortal man, calls himself godfather and you are going there. Godfather of who? Not the prophetic I know, it's not my godfather. He's too, he, he's too, he's too, he's too nobody. He's too nobody to be God and Father in the prophetic. So if he's Godfather, what happened to people like Johnson Suleiman? What happened to Makandiwa? What happened to my own spiritual father, Archbishop, late Archbishop Benson Daosa, who prophesied people's names, who prophesied, I said, when he was alive, people's names, prophesied, raised dead, cheaply, raised dead, cheaply. I'm not talking about people that would draw camera to the side and start, you start acting in Hollywood that they are pulling the legs long. Then when the camera is off, the person is still going with one leg, limping like this and going home. They didn't, they didn't perform miracle for Hollywood. What happened to them? What happened to the A.A. Allens that see you and tell you your name and where you are from? What are they? God's sons of the prophetic. And we are dancing to the tune of the devil using men that have been fired by God. Like I said, what I'm saying is not what you hear every day. Because it's not what I do every day. It's three nights with Prophet John Enuma. Three nights with the prophet. We need to bring order back. And what I'm saying is to bring order back even to him to repent. Nobody is, a, no one is perfect. But the thing is, when you now use that thing as ministry to fool people, the gullible ones, gullible ones, that the gullible ones, those that don't know themselves, they look for entertainment, power hungry. Like I said, again, this is three nights with Prophet John. Three nights with the prophets. To some, him gave apostles. To some prophets. To some teachers. To some evangelists. To some pastors. For their edification. The perfecting of the body. The perfecting. You have members that cannot raise prayer points. You are a pastor. You, have, you are tolerating members that cannot raise prayer points. After five years in your ministry. My brother, you need to be beaten. Flogged off the altar. Flogged. Minist ministry of believers that cannot pray flog off the altar as a pastor and you now say you're a prophet how 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 Ephesians 4 11 he, he himself gave to be he himself gave some to be apostles, to some prophets, to some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry. 
I have been told before I started ministry that the Lord told me clearly. He said, son, many will hate you. Many will not like you. He said, but don't be afraid of their faces. Then the Lord, that's when he led me to Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 1. This new dispensation, or let me say, I did say in the book of, I'm sorry, I did say, I did say during the crossover service that the year 2020, the Lord said it's a new era. My new era. We are seeing it now. It's a new era for humanity, for mankind, for everything, for everyone. New era. So the Lord told me, it's a new era, even for the church. Tables are turning, things are shifting. People are saying a greater prosperity, greater blessing, multiplying this, multiply great, 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 great year. This one, that one, final year, this one. They're all lies. It's a new era, the Lord said. Tell me, is new era, is there on my page? 2020, my new era. Tell me what's happening now. It's a new era for even humanity. After everything has been shut down by a virus. Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7, verse, verse 6, Jeremiah 1, 6. It says, this is after God told Jeremiah that I've ordained you a prophet even before you were born. I've ordained you a prophet in the nation before you were born. I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Now look at verse 6 of Jeremiah chapter 1. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say, the Lord said to me, the Lord said to me, you see, what I am doing, in, what I will be doing in these three nights is one of the toughest things. Is one of the toughest things. What I will be doing in these three nights is one of the toughest things. It's not something I just wake up in the morning and I just choose to do. It's one of the toughest things. But the Lord said to me, I said to Lord, I said, ah, Lord, I'm a child. I said, speak. But I said, I cannot speak, for I'm a child. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am a child. Verse 7. Do not say I am youth. Do not say I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I send thee. I have been sent to people like you, but angel, to tell him, to become responsible. I've been sent to people like J. Israel. Get off the kitchen. You are not called for the prophetic ministry. Go and sit down. It's not about the gift and whatever you think you know. Go and sit down. I've been sent to people like Passion Java. God does not know you. You're on your way to hell. You're misleading people. I've been sent to speak to America. The only man God is pleased with in America right now is Dr. Uh, what is his name? Award Rodney? Rodney Award. That is the only man God is pleased with now, right now. Dr. Rodney Award. And let me tell you something. After this lockdown is lifted, is the man I want to go and see. Personally, I, Prophet Johnny Numa, I would like to see Dr. Rodney Award. God has told me to speak. Says, For thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatever I command thee, thou shalt speak. He's the only man, yes, right now in America. He's the only man. Someone said the only man is the only man right now in America. That's me personally, based on what I've heard and seen, heard and seen, is the only man that I will go see right now. After the lockdown is lifted. It is time for you to leave the place of mediocrity with your spirituality. There was someone who sent me a text. I want to address something very quickly as well. Someone sent me a text uh, saying how God told them. I've not addressed this since, but I want to address it now. Someone sent me a text saying how God told them that um god god and god told them twice twice that um they should return back to their old church now you know and they should go and do what you know they want to go and do what god has told them 
Thank God you said God told you. Yes? So, now that you have come of age, you've come of age now, I hereby withdraw all of my grace from your life. And I leave you to yourself and the God that spoke to you. I withdraw that grace. You're not going back to nature. Who are you fooling? Which God? Which church? And this is to everybody. If in this season, those that disconnect from my life and ministry, I also hereby withdraw the grace. But those that are connected to truth and this oil, this grace will work for you. As I place a demand on the mantle that was on my father's life, Archbishop Benson, in those blessed memories. I carry the spirit of the man, and if you don't like me, to hell with you. There are many people that Archbishop, let Archbishop Benson in Daosa. There are many people that let Archbishop Benson in Daosa mentored, fathered, anointed, ordained, imparted, nurtured. They, they are all failing, failing him today. Having a mega auditorium does not do justice. There is nothing big in mega. Nine clubs are big too. Uh, nine clubs are big. What is that festival in England where ta hundreds of thousands of people come? Glanstone, eh? Glanstonbury. Glanstonbury. <laughs> Jesus. Glanstonbury Festival is mega too. So your mega church and Glanstonbury Festival is not, you are not doing nothing big. Becoming mega church is not an achievement. If late Archbishop Benson Idaosa, blessed memories, if late Archbishop Benson Idaosa was alive today, are you telling me that late Archbishop will sit in his house and believers and Christians and Muslims, everybody, people are dying of this virus? If late A.A. Allen was alive today, are you telling me that people would die of virus like this? Do you think it's bag of rice that make them enter the record books in heaven? Do you think it is giving them palm, giving people palm oil and giving people five five thousand naira and hundred hundred dollars from the church coffers that made them legends in the kingdom? No, it is how they dealt with the devil. Many people are clapping for big auditoriums and pastors sharing rice. The devil is also sharing rice in this season. Unbelievers are sharing rice. Atheists are giving rice. Atheists are giving money. Atheists are giving nothing. So there is nothing special that you pastor, prophet, or apostle, bishop, you're doing. My late father, blessed memories, Archbishop Bessin Daosa, would not do, he won't sit down and watch virus kill his people. Late Archbishop was studying. He was in the school of theology. He told them, he said, I have to go. My people are dying. People need me. I cannot be sitting here saying I'm studying school of theology. He was impacted and he left. Let Archbishop, the story goes that a child fell, burst the brain. The brain poured out. He, got, he, he gathered the brain. And when he prayed, the, the, the skull and the brain came back and the child was restored without ambulance. What is wrong with this generation? It is true. It is three nights with Prophet John. This is not night of, this is three nights of different things you say about me. Because I've come to talk about the mind of God in the next day. Tomorrow is going to be different about, from this. If let that bishop was alive, with this seat back, you might be saying, Prophet John, but what have you also done in this season about the virus? To God be the glory. We have testimony, right? We have the video of people who have been healed of coronavirus through one prayer. The same virus killing others. I pray for people. One prayer. Just one prayer. 24 hours later, 48 hours later, respectively, virus disappeared. You might be saying, Professor, why don't you go out? The question is, I don't have that kind of fame to go to hospitals. They won't let me in. But are you telling me that some of these so-called purpose who knows politicians, they cannot use the fame? Then after this, after this, after this, after this, uh, uh, the lockdown is lifted. You, you want to now gather 50,000 people with that fake fame and say it's three nights of the Holy Spirit in the stadium. You're a criminal. With great fame comes great responsibilities in the gospel. Apostle Paul was very famous. 
and he used his fame to great effect to the Corinthians, the Ephesians, the Thessalonians, the Philippians, the Romans, the Colossians. Every place he could enter with the fame because he was a student of under Gamalia and a full of Christ. A Jew and a Roman at the same time, which was very rare in those days. Would Apostle Paul be seated here? And do we not know about the virus? Pastors are saying, oh, sit in your house. The Bible also says quarantine and uh, quarantine, quarantine. The Bible also says the Bible. What a shame. Cowards. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible also says the Bible. Are you sure? Don't twist the Bible, please. The Bible also says, lock yourself, go to your house and lock yourself up for some time until my anger pass. The Bible also says, creature earnestly awaits the manifestations of the sons of God. It's not just having mega churches. I beg and I choose to defer from what is happening in our time. And I've been crying to the Lord. Lord, if you want to use me like these people, kill me now. Just, I don't want to take me away. Take, just kill me. Kill, kill me and take me. But if you want to use me greater than the fathers, people like Apostle Babalola, people like Archbishop Benson Edosa, people like A.A. A. Allen, people like Catherine Kuma, Ilapa Zadiga Dadash Jadash, if you want to use me greater than those people, then you can keep me alive. If not, take me. Don't use me like this current generation preachers and big bishops. That is why many people are looking at me and say, this young boy, this young man, where do you get this power and anointing from? I know what I cry to God. I know what the price I am paying. Because many of the so-called preacher preachers of my age dare not say what I'm saying because why? They are licking the backside. They are ready to lick the backside, the armpit of all these men for quick, cheap fame. There is one, one so-called boy calling himself a prophet in uh, London. I won't mention his name. Going on, and, go and sit down. You are looking for fame. Go on, you are Hollywood. Go and sit down. You are Hollywood. I won't even mention his name. Go and sit down. What is his name, Seth? What is his name? Mama is refusing to give me a name. Mama, what is that man's, that boy's name? <laughs> Claiming he's going up. Oh, God and God is saying about the nations of the earth. God is saying. You are not. Go and sit down. You are chewing gum prophets. You are not. You don't know what it is to be a prophet. You are Hollywood. Go and sit down. People are dying, perishing, and you are Hollywood. Oh. I'm not bashing, please. I'm not bashing. I'm trying to open our eyes that we all wake up and mount up our watch. Pick up Bible and no Bible. No more pettiness. No more pettiness. No more ordinariness. Many people are so anointed in their own rights. Go and open church and start ministry. Many people will come to church and be, they want to manipulate members to their houses. Your house, very soon, this year, your house, the roof will cave and kill all of you inside. Mark my word. Those of you that think you are anointed, I have told God. And you know what God says? He says it's a new era for the body of Christ. Because he said there is no, no, there's no more time. There's no more time. People like Benny Im has failed, it's, it's failed the young and the next generation of preachers like ourselves. It's failed us. Why is it called Pa Benny? Because of your white suit and you're shouting Holy Spirit and you're dancing like someone that drank beer. That is not what we need. The Holy Spirit is it flows through all of us. This is the time where people like Benny in should justify the so-called anointing. People like Yaki Lome, where are you? Yala! It's time. The Lord said there is a wave, Libash, Zalabosh, 
the Lord said I should tell this generation. There is a wave. There is a wave. Listen to me. Like I said, it's three nights with a prophet. It's just going to be, I can go left, right, up, down, anywhere. No structure. The Lord said there's a wave. There is a wave. There is a wave coming. And this wave will carry raw, raw, brutal prophets and raw, brutal oracles and raw, brutal vessels, raw, brutal evangelists, raw, brutal preachers and pastors. They will not be of the regular, regular, regular type. The, the, the cultural type, theologically cultural type. They won't be the, the theological theologically conservative type don't be theologically pruned they will just be used by the holy ghost some might never have read the bible prior to an encounter but following the encounter the lord said i will use them i will speak to them i will speak through them i will use and minister to the people through them they will speak genesis to revelation and revelation back to genesis without even knowing the book and some of them will come from the islamic nation there will be a wave of fire the lord said many people that even look like two people rock stars they look like drug addicts they will be mightily used by god they will come from outside and invade the church they will they will they will, they will beat the movement of the church because why the church has filled me there's a wave coming and it's not in you angel it's not in benin it's not there it's not the passion passion java that one is that one is that one is, is, is the Lord is the Lord is about to deal with him. Write it down. Someone like Bushiri is going to be greater. Nobody can stop him. But he needs to disconnect from people like Bipet Pet Angel. We are still going far. The Lord was speaking to me the other day. He said, write it down. There is a man called Didier Drogba. Didier Drogba. He is about to be anointed the next president of his country. But there's go write it down. There's going to be militations against him. Because he, the Lord said he's going to bring order back to the nation. He's, and this order is going to bring back to the I I I Ivorian nation. Ivory Coast, the Ivorian nation. The Lord said this order will, 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 will limit the stealing and the looting of the cabals of his nation. But the Lord said, fear not, DJ Drogba, for I am with you. You will be president of that nation in my time. Write it down. Write it down. Write down, write down a prophecy. Note it. Prophecy about Didier Drogba becoming the president of the nation. There's someone called Samuel Eto. He's not going to be president. If he tries it, he will die in the process because they will, they will assassinate him. But he said, I have made him an ambassador and a speak and a speaker. A representative of his nation that will be more relevant than any president that will rule his nation. Samuel Eto, you are not meant to be grown for president. But God said, I will make you more relevant than your president because the world will hear your voice concerning your nation, Cameroon. Write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down. Today is what? The 24th, Friday, 24th of April 2020. Write it down. Still nice with the prophet. And like I said, it's not it's a non-structural three nights. Prophets are called. If you are still set, if you are still searching, there's one man that, that chased me, chased me, chased me. Every time I'm live, he's always commenting. In those days, about two years ago, on my Facebook, he's always loving. He's always, he, he, he came on, they said, Prophet, I want you to impact me. I want to prophesy like you. I said, okay. I will think about it. I'll pray about it. I'll pray about it. <laughs> I was waiting 20 days, 30 days. After that, that was the last time I saw him saying hello and communicating. Because why? He wants to prophesy like me. Thief. Prophets are not, they are not trained. They are called. It, you are born for it. There is a man called Kofi Danso. Kofi Danso. Heavily called by God. But like I said, 
the enemy doesn't want him to really fulfill what God wants him to fulfill in North America, in the Northern American continent, Canada and Co. That is why there's been warfare. Don't judge him on his mistakes. Some people, God loved them more than, he loved them more than their mistakes. He's a great man. If only he can spend more time. Get! Listen, get yourselves ready. There is a wave coming. This wave is not with the so-called purpose, you know. You are wasting your time if you are with them. They've let God down. They've cowed. They've let God down. God has bypassed them. And my prayer is, Lord, if you can use anything, use Prophet John in human. Use me, oh God. Use me. Use my voice. Use me. Use my body. Use my life. Use me. Use me. Use me. Use me. If you can use anything, you can use me. Someone said, what about praying for them? How can you pray for people that God sacked? You pray for their salvation. You can't pray. It's God that puts a man back into office. You pray for their salvation. Someone like Benny In. He's only trying to restrain his step. That's why he went online the other day, was some months ago, saying how um, 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 sowing seed or something, what was he saying? It's, it's, a, it's a sin against God. I said, shut up, sir. Go and repent yourself. You know how you, how you became lost, chasing money. Sowing seed is not a sin. It's an opener to God's blessing. I've sown seed. I've sown a 35 pound seed and got 8,000 pounds in 24 hours for my ministry before. I, my ministry needed 10,000 pounds. I cried to God. The Lord said, How? Empty your account. I said, Lord, all I have is 35 pounds, which is about, say, 42 or $43. I said, that, that, that was all I had at the time. The Lord said, Pay, take this seed, take every, empty your account and sow it into the life of this person. I sowed it into a ministry's life and in 24 hours, a stranger walked in and gave us 8,000 pounds for the building. Fund we need to pay urgently if not we have lost the building. This was in 2016 in the branch in Catherine. So how can you not tell me that seed is a seed? No, sir, you missed your way. Change. Understand something. When God gives you access into the realm of the prophetic and the apostolic, you will be judged the most among the fivefold ministries. You'll be judged the most. Those that move with so much power and anointing in ministry are the ones that will face more judgment to God before God. Why? You have been given access into divinity's ability and capacity to move in the human realm. You have been given access into the secret things of God and you take it for granted. You know, like I said, um, I might not have many friends after this, but I don't care. I wasn't called into ministry for friends. I was meant to edify. That is why prophets in those days were not popular folks before kings, queens, and certain people. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh, not because he didn't want to be used by God, but he knew if he went to Nineveh, he's probably not going to come back alive. <laughs> because Nineveh was a dangerous place for prophets to go speak their mind. Or, sorry, for prophets go speak the mind of God. I prophesied some time ago that Theresa May was not your prime minister in the United Kingdom. I received abuses. I was, I was insulted. I was called all sorts of names. Some people said I'm a stupid sub saharan Prophets, sub saharan this, I'm shutting, I need, shut, I need to shut the F up and shut the G off and shut the, shut the A off. A few months later, the Lord spoke again. I said, listen, if she doesn't come out of that office, she will die there or she'll be thrown out. Less than two weeks, <laughs> we heard that what? She quit. She resigned herself. Everybody were jumping Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson. Some people are praying for Boris Johnson. Yes, pray for his life. 
But understand some but Johnson is not anointed by God for this nation. Mm -mm. He's not anointed by God for the United Kingdom. The man God has anointed and ordained for the United Kingdom. Do you want to know his name? His name is called Ian Thomas. A E N E N Thomas. I don't know who he is. I don't know what he looks like. I've never met him. It's an the man, the Lord showed me the man is an unusual man. I saw two people. I saw Theresa May. I saw another man. Then behind that man, I saw Ian Thomas came up. I announced, I said this a year and a half ago. So I'm not just saying it today. The prophecy has been out one year and a half ago. The man came in the realm of the spirit, in the vision, looked like a very unusual man. Very, very unusual man. Very unusual man. I said, what kind of man is this? I said, then I woke up. After I came out from the, the, from the revelation, I said, Lord, what is this? Why? How, how, I don't, what kind of man is this? I went, then I went online and I typed in the name when I woke up in the morning. I typed in the name, um, the name online. And the only Ian Thomas I could find, except there's another one I didn't see, was a black man. It made sense why he looked unusual in the vision. A black man being a prime minister of this nation. My God, that would cost, that would be a big stir in the United Kingdom. How many prophets will say that? Where's your bet angel? It's, it doesn't tell us about what God is saying about this country. But to show people Lamborghini and satanic perception. And that's what people are getting enti entertained about. And call himself Godfather of the prophetic and try to insult genuine young men God called. And you are all entertained. Blind leading the blind. Yeah, 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 ladash. I was called all sorts of names. Where are they now? They said then, Boris Johnson is currently uh, someone is acting as the prime minister now, right? Eh? Temp there's now a temporary prime minister but it's Johnson suddenly recovering there's now a temporary prime minister Okay, God will call you to leadership then you're not there when he needs you to speak and shine that's not God don't mock God like I said I didn't come here to bash mm -mm. if you inter interpret as bash then I'm sorry I don't know who you're an apology I have told you the prophets and people you should listen to and those you should run from. Passion, Passion, Passion Vaja. What's his name? Passion, is it Passion Vaja? Java. Oh, sorry. Passion Java. You see, his name is not even sweet. Passion Java. That, that is a playboy that needs to go upon a fashion industry or go into ninth clubbing. It's not that one. It's not, I don't know. God is not with that one. It's not with spirit of God. It's not there. We need to clear this, clear our nations of. There is no longer time. There's no more time. The prophet John, you think uh, is? I'm not. I'm not. I've never been an entertainer. I don't want to be one. If that start entertaining you, you better come to order. It's time to rise up. People have come, people have said all sorts, how God this, how God called them, how God can speak to them. Please go and open your own churches. If God, if God speaks to you, whilst you are under the grace of your, your set man of God, and God is speaking to you more than him, go and open your church. It's not God, that's the devil speaking to you. God can speak to you more than your pastor. But when you now think that you have a voice more than him, in the same roof, under the same roof, that's not God. God is, he will send you out. Go. That's witchcraft. Time has come for us to rise up. Time has come. It's not about prophet bashing prophet, apostles bashing apostles. I'm not called for that. What I'm doing here is to let those that are following me know the people you should be you, you can listen to if you want to even listen to them. Where are the so-called fathers today? Not even one. 
can lead by example. Everybody is afraid of the virus. Hiding, hiding, hiding. Sharing bag of rice and beans and palm oil. Even the devil is doing it in this season. What makes us different? Purpose. You, you, you guys preach, charge messages. And we have been made to believe that yes, indeed you are called to, to move mountains. Now there's a mountain before us. Move it. Use the fame to shake governments to give you opportunity to pray for the sick. Because some of us don't yet have that, don't yet have that fame. Let God give me such platform. Then we will know. I will put God to the test. If God fails us, then I know God failed. But God never fails. When you put him, if there be, is there still a prophet in the land? If I be a man of God, Archbishop Benson Dowser has said. Let the God that answers by fire be God. Elijah was ready to put his life on the line for fire to fall from heaven. Prior to that moment, fire had not fallen from heaven for the sole purpose of sacrificial experiment. I've been called many names. I've been called a rebel, a wicked boy, a this, a that. Some of them, thank God, they've repented and are call, calling me son again. Son, <laughs> son. I refuse to join the bandwagon. If I really wanted to be a, a, a millionaire in millions of dollars today, my brother, I would have done it two years ago, three years ago. But I refuse to follow that line. I, because why? God has destined me to be a multi, multi millionaire, if not billions. But I will not help God to give me what his hand is meant to release to me without strings attached. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, any prophet that does not edify you, wrong. If, uh, God told the prophet to go marry a prostitute. So I am not bashing, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about that. If God can tell a prophet to marry a prostitute in the Bible, I'm not here to say this. No, no. If someone like Moses can marry someone outside of the Israel, Israelite line, bloodline, it's not that, and that's not where I'm coming from. I'm talking about people that should never have climbed the altar. Or people that once climbed the altar that have been fired by God, but are manipulatively dragging the crowd, a lot of vulnerable crowd anyway, to pits. How can I tell my minister, my own minister to go and open service, and all my minister is saying on the altar is, as I pray now with my $3,000 suit, I will slap and beat that minister off my altar. I will beat him off the altar. With my, as I pray for you with my three thousand dollar suit, I, I will, that that is the moment I will cut that mic, use the mic to beat you off the altar, beat you off the altar. You and your three dollar suit can might as well get out of the altar. And this kind of men are celebrated, and they are celebrating who they are following, and the crowd are foolishly wasting themselves there. One woman went there one time, her life suddenly went down. The woman came to me and knelt down and said, God, please, prophet, please pray for me for mercy. God said I should come back to you as a father. But today, God, the same God said you should, you should return to your whole church. I don't know that God, my sister. Keep that God to yourself. Grace has been withdrawn from you. I've addressed you tonight. I don't know that kind of God. God is not a prostitute. He doesn't, he's not a church prostitute. I don't know what you all have come online for tonight. I don't know if you are coming for prophesy. Tell me, prophet. Why? I'm not here to make you shout. I'm here to make you think. I'm sure after this you'll be thinking, what was that? But it's three nights with the prophet. Tomorrow will be different. Sunday will be different. Different things. Remember the prophet of old, the young prophet. The Lord said, Go, speak to the king. Deliver this message. On your way back, don't eat, don't drink. Don't eat, don't drink. 
don't take the same road back. Don't take that same path back. Don't take that same path back. What happened? A, the Bible says, a, 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 an old now told him, the angel of God said, if God tells you something, an angel tells you something, which one should you listen to? If God was, why didn't God speak to the old prophet first? The old prophet had been fired by God. All he had was fame. All he had was past glory. Because if the old prophet was relevant, God would have used the young, God would have, God would have not gone to the young old prophet. God would, wouldn't have gone to the young prophet, but he would have gone directly to the old prophet giving the message for the king. But God knew that the old prophet had compromised himself with the portion of the king's table. So he had no standing before God and the king to deliver a pure word. There are people who, 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 who are in different areas. You are coming to church trying to, trying, to, trying, to correct, trying to correct that you know when you yourself need teaching. Like I said, I'm not here to please anybody tonight. Three nights with prophets. If you meet a prophet, you should know that Something from the throne room should shake you after that meeting. And that's what's happening tonight. How can a prophet have... A, a prophet is estimated net worth. $150 million. Estimated net worth. $160 million US dollars. Not, not Zimbabwean dollars. How can a prophet be... 180 million US dollars. But yet you are doing fundraising for Missions Week to raise $70,000 for television. $80,000 for television. You're a thief. You're a thief, you prophet. You're a thief. You're the kind of man that is making ministry tough for the young, genuine ones. Coming before you, did the fathers do that to you? Did the fathers do that to you? So if you are listening to me, you are sowing seed to such places, you are wasting your time. You ain't getting no blessings there. They are living big inheritance for their own biological children to take and you end up in poverty. Uh, you can see mama behind the scene. I wish I could take a picture. She's like this. Oh, prophet, what are you doing tonight? Can I be estimated 160 million US dollars? And I have a Rolls Royce worth 100,000 dollars. But yet I'm raising, I'm doing missions week. Missions week. For what God told me, not you. God told me to open a TV station of 70,000 dollars. Won't I have to sell my Rolls Royce to do it if God told me? And let him reward me in time. But you still collect from vulnerable idiots. Who are not descend. Jesus said, He gave that seed to the sower. When Jesus wanted to pay his debt, now watch this. Jesus sent the disciples to the river bank to catch a fish, not to catch a human being. A fish spat out gold coin, not a human being. Because at that point, Christ knew that his capacity was greater than what anybody could do for him then. He used what he had for the ministry. Five loaves of bread and two fishes. So what do we have here? He multiplied it. He multiplied it. Not people emptying you for their multiplication. For their multiplication. For their multiplication. For their multiplication. You are increasing. You are telling me you want us to sow seed to open a TV station worth 100,000. But you are worth 800 million dollars. My brother, well, vanity on vanity, all is vanity. I'm not bashing. No, I'm not bashing. Relax. Cool, cool, cool off. Calm down. I'm not bashing. I'm not here for that. I'm not here for that. I'm opening your eyes. If a pastor that is raggedy looking, listen to me, mama. A pastor that is raggedy looking, those, those in America want to understand what I mean by raggedy looking. 
you look rough. A pastor looking rough and hungry and scruffy comes to you and tells you the truth. God said this, thus says the Lord. You will most likely not li listen to him. You will most likely slap his face. You will most likely to tell him to get off. But John the Baptist was dressed in animal skin, eating locusts in the deserts. Preparing the way for Christ to come. Why wasn't he yes, well dressed and like a priest in, in the synagogue? But in our generation, if the man does not come with a Rolls Royce, he's not anointed. If the man does not come with a Bentley, he's not anointed. If the man comes simple, naked, and tells you he's ma the mind of God, oh, please, it, 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 it's, not, it's not called. Then you now go for the, the business tacticians in suits, praying on the vulnerable. Wickedly be deceitful on the altar. God will judge you. You now have the F13 to open your mouth to talk about genuine, genuine men of God like us. Called for by God without any purpose, any any selfish ambition. Let me share a testimony that nobody knows. I will say it today. Nobody knows what I'm about to say. Nobody what I'm about to share. Nobody knows this except Mama. Please listen to this. Nobody knows this testimony except Mama. Mama is like this. Please don't say. But I will say she doesn't know what I want to say, so I don't know why she's already begging. <laughs> Mama, relax. Brief, brief, brief. I, I speak not of myself. I know you are just being a wife, but listen to this. There was a time. It's three nights with a prophet. You know, a lot of people will just see a, see a prophet online speaking, speaking. You've not actually taken your time to, to hear him say the truth to you. You've not weighed the truth. The Bible says, by their fruits, what? You know them. It says, the, the, the Jesus said, it says, it, it, the Bible says, test every what? Spirit. I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. Because Why? I have not licked any man's ass, so I'm not afraid of keeping any man's relationship. <laughs> Are you understanding me? I'm not afraid of keeping any papa's relationship because I don't know any papa that has, that has come and say, um, the Lord sent me to, to give you 10 million. So I will speak my mind and the truth as the Lord has laid it in my mind. You hear me? There was a time I joined the sons of the prophets. One of my mentors, Johnson Suleiman. This was about two years ago. I joined the, 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 the source of the prophets, Johnson Suleiman's source of the prophets, because he's, 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 one of my, he's still one of my mentors. You know, he's still one of my mentors. But what I'm still con con currently considering anyway. So, um, what happened was this. When we joined the sons of the prophets, they gave us a list like um, to write your names, your full name, your mobile number, your admin, um, your email address and everything. We did so. So I went for, went for the minister's conference. Apostle was there talking to all of us. We're listening. It was, a, it was an amazing time. The next day or a couple of days later, I received a message on my WhatsApp where my name had been added to a list of the United Kingdom Sons of the Prophets to Johnson Suleiman. And of, of course, you know, we are happy, Sons of the Prophet, you know, yes, the Sons of the Prophet group was mainly formatted to receive messages from the Apostle, also to pray for him, his ministry, his family, which is what is meant to be. But just within one week, less than one week, about three, four days, within one week of being on the group, people, so-called pastors, bishops, prophets, apostles that were on that group claimed to be sons of Joseph Suleiman. All they started doing was this. They started shouting. They want one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one prophetic meeting, one-on-one. -on -one. We need to see the, we need to see Papa. How can we not see Papa? It, it, well, how can we be sons of prophets? We cannot see Papa. It's time to discuss with Papa. I... I I, I tolerated the message for about two weeks. I exploded on that message platform. I said, what kind of nonsense is this? 
Is this why you joined to be sons of the prophets? So, without one-on-one, -on -one, you can't hear from God. Without one-on-one, -on -one, you can't connect to the grace of God upon his life. They were all on that group for their wicked and selfish ambitions. And I told them, I cannot be part of it. I deleted myself from that group and deleted the group from my phone. I cannot be part of it. The best way to show sonship to a man in ministry is by the evidence of your ministry. Are you listening to me? The best way, the best way to show son sonship to me, I know some of my sons are online, some of my daughters are online, the best way to show your daughter to me, to the, when I seem to me, I'm not talking about this physical man, you are a daughter to the grace of God upon my life. You call this, you've come under the covering of this grace. The best way to prove sonship, the best way to prove daughterhood to me is by what? The success of that confession. You fulfilling what God has called you to do as a son in my life. What God has called you to do as a daughter in my life. And one of them, apart from money, because you can, you, you, I have seen people who have said their daughters they, they put one 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 dollar down and they now think that i should start licking their backs like do i look like pampas to pack your pool complete disrespect and disregard of the anointing someone sent me a dirty text message telling me you know i, I know you are you are a busy man of god what, what was i before you met me busy way to prove it is by show, just show me your success show me the success of my teachings in you now mama just spoke in tongues <laughs> show me the success of my teachings in you listen there is many of you you know when you meet me you say prof with people see me they say they see johnson suleiman people see me they say they see nha people see me they say they see um, uh, Idaosa. people see me they say they just call different men of god because why i have the teachings from their altar, I I take it for the sole man, sole purpose of fulfilling the reason why they taught in the first place. Not to buy a book and keep the book and just put it on the wall. I have 10 books from the man, but one book, one page of the book is not in your life. One page, Jilata Yatagadash, is not in your life. One page. There are people who will gadadash. Stop by a man's book and think you become a son because you bought a book. You become a son when that the, his teaching is evident in your life, your ministry, your behavior, your attitude, and the move of God. Meaning, listen, when you buy my book, the same power I carry should re reciprocate in you. They, they, you know, every time a man writes a book, there is an anointing to write. So the best way, the way to prove your sonship to that man, to prove your sonship to the grace upon his life, is by what the, the, the anointing when he was writing should be made manifest in your life. You know the funny thing? I have never in my life met Johnson Suleiman and shook his hand like this. Never. I have never in my life met a nature and shook his hand like this. I have never ever met Archbishop Benson Delsa. <laughs> he died before I even realized I was called. I've met, never ever, ever met, I've never even seen Bishop Wade. I've, I've seen him physically a few times, but I've never shook his hands. All these men are called mentors. I've never ever shook their hands. Never. They've never laid down on my head. Not. I don't know. They, I'm sure they might probably know me physically, but I've never, never. But yet, Jilapalaka, that is the spirit of the man in me. Of the man. Calling me Papa, 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 Papa. I've heard that too much. It's witchcraft. Don't call witchcraft. Call no man father on earth. You don't call me Papa. Show me Papa. Show me. Show me. Some people call you Papa when they are broke, they are down, they are in pain, they are in misery, their life is in tatters. But as soon as they taste small sugar, they eat small cake in life. They just throw you and take you away to the place of disrespect. In the name of God, spoke to some of them. They drain you of virtue from the altar. 
calling you. My God said I should come and say, you're my father, my mother. Then when it's time for them to go, they find another, another father and mother. Those ones are just, they are, they are natural spiritual bastards. Nobody can father them. They are spiritual prostitutes. If you are listening to me, repent. I have seen many of you, that, those type of people, they die cheaply. They die cheaply. Cheap. I see them die cheaply. Being a spiritual orphan is the most dangerous thing any believer can go through in life. Being spiritually orphaned is the most dangerous position, the most vulnerable position. Archbishop Duncan Williams, he shared a testimony on one of his messages. How he, he, he took the, the, the grace of his covering, which was from late Archbishop Benson Daosa's life. He took that covering for granted. And he, he, he landed in hot water. But it's funny that the man today is bashing the younger ones today. Anyway, let's talk about people that are important. Many of you are listening to me. I didn't come to entertain you. Moving forward, this is the new prophet John Enuma. The man has always been there anyway, but you probably haven't seen it because why? You've never been to certain, 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 certain services. Or you've not seen certain moments. This is an episode that many of you are being baptized into today. But if you've never seen me speak like that, like this, you should be worried that I'm fake. A woman contacted me some time ago from um, Trinidad and Tobago telling me how she wanted me to be a spiritual father. And the Lord said, take your time and watch her. God even spoke through someone close to me, I won't mention, to watch her. We were watching her. And the same woman decided to put the blame of her life on me. Why blame me when I was not there when you took your own steps? Whatever you don't involve me with in the beginning, don't bring me in when you're in trouble. And whatever you start with me and it, it brings us to a place of glorious end and you want to take the glory alone, you will die for correction. Write it down. It is time for us to understand. Three days with the prophets. It, it is, this is, you get raw truth. There will be prophetic. There will be different things. Everything will be said. You are listening to me. You are one of those that will only send messages for prayers. You only send messages for prophecies. But you have never taken time out to say, Man of God, how are you doing? You are wicked. I'm not saying that we, uh, we, I need your, your checkups. No. After all, there was one man that was supposedly, supposedly part of the church council of my ministry in 2015. <laughs> uh, one day I was, I was asked, you were saying, prophet, you don't call people to check up on people. You don't. I said, but that's why we have welfare department. If I start calling everybody, if I call brother A today and brother B doesn't get a call from me, he would say that prophet has a personal preference in brother A than him. So that's why we have the welfare department, the church secretary, the church, ad church admin to check up on everybody. Then I asked this gentleman, this supposed elderly man that's part of the council. I said, sir, but it's funny you are saying all this. When last, or, or I said, no, but the question was, I said, who checks up on pastors? Who checks up on pastors like us? Who checks up on prophets? Who checks up on pastors? And he kept quiet. I said, you yourself, you yourself, brother, you this man, you talking. You have my personal number. When was the last time you carried phone and said, I just want to say hello, sir? You know what he said? He said, man of God, after all, God called you. God will check up on you. That's what he said. I said, Jesus, look at the person that I'm calling part of the church council. On that same day, I removed him from church council. Because th those are the kind of men that will poison you. Try to kill your children after you are dead. 
to take over what they never planted, what they never labored for in the ministry. I have seen people with my this this you see you see my my head is going bald a bit. The experience of ministry has made my hair <laughs> fade out. <laughs> I'm say, prophet, you're going bald though. I said, but my father is not bald. What's, where is this coming from? <laughs> he said, don't worry, God will check up on you. I looked at him, God will check up on me. I said, thank you, Lord, that you are not man. If not... I probably will, I'll probably be, I probably will not be qualified to be anybody's pastor. Why am I saying this tonight? Men, I know that there are some people watching right now. They are not commenting. They are just behind the scene. Taking some, some notes. And wickedly listening to me. Don't worry. My God is coming for your head and your neck. You are next. But those that are online watching me right now. For their soul edification, my God shall bless you. God will bring you to a place of discernment to grow. I'm not talking, I'm not here to bash pastors or jam because no, no, I'm, I'm not saying it's time for, we start. We start, I'm not saying that we should, we should, we should start. Um, 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 I'm, I'm not talking about um, bashing pastors and um, um, no, that's what I'm doing here. No pastor, no pastor is perfect. Pastors are ordinary men that God picked to use. I'm not talking about that. There are evidence of people uh, God told a prophet to marry a prostitute. So is it my place to judge that kind of prophet? God told, uh, um, sorry, it, it, Moses, Moses married a woman outside of the, tribe of the tribes of Israel. That's not where I'm coming from. But I'm talking about people that you should be careful. The foxes and the wolves in sheep clothing. Some genuinely started God fired some. If you are Zimbabwean, if you are Zimbabwean, the only prophet in Zimbabwe right now that you should be listening to, listen to. If you are Zimbabwean and you want to listen to any Zimbabwean prophets because you are Zimbabwean, listen to Makandiwa. I don't know who he is, so I'm not. I'm not here speaking or advocating and and, and trying to clap for him and trying to, to, to look for his fame. I don't know who he is. I don't want. To, I don't want to know who. I don't want to meet him if God has not designed it. Because I, uh, my prayer every time is, whatever the grace of God cannot give me, I don't want it. Wherever the grace of God cannot take me to, I don't want to go there. Whoever the grace of God does, who doesn't want me to connect to, I don't want to connect with them. So if God wants me to connect with him, God will do it. If not, I don't want. But if you are Zimbabwean and you desire to listen to your Zimbabwean prophets, look for only one man called Makandiwa. Is a man that has tried to keep him check himself and in line with. If you, when you listen to his teachings, you will know this man is reading Bible and having encounters with the Spirit of God. Not people that are coming here jumping up and down, wearing using using flash to cover canalized members' eyes. Listen to me. If you are Nigerian, you are looking for a prophet to listen to. There are many I can call today. But me, based on teachings, based on teachings, based on teachings, so far, John C. Suleiman, if you see his track record of teachings from the past till today, there's consistency. The prophetic flow, there's consistency. The power, there's consistency. The truth, there's consistency. The DNA is proven. The DNA is my DNA. So, and that is why, I, that's why I said it. We are from the same father. My father's late Bishop, Archbishop, late, late Archbishop Benson Dawson. He prophesied my birth. Whether you don't like it or not, whether I don't to prove nothing to you. My, what God is using my life to do is a, is a proof in itself. There's no man that has laid hand on me and said, impart you with grace to function. Nowhere. How? Ah, where? Who born you? Say it, your mouth will go zip. If you are South African, you're looking for a South African prophet to listen to. I would have recommended Bushiri, but he needs to pray very well. So for now, I don't recommend any, any prophet in South Africa. I don't recommend any prophet in South Africa. I don't. I don't recommend any prophet in South Africa right now. I don't. 
If you are Zambian looking for a prophet, sorry, your nation don't have any prophet that I will take that, that I will say go and listen to. Because the nation, the nation is governed by wicked people and nobody is speaking. I'm, I'm not saying there are no prophets there, but I said that I will recommend you to. That I will. I don't know. If you are Ghanaian and you're looking for a prophet, <laughs> God help you. No comment. No comment. And if you are a so-called archbishop, because I know some of these videos, there's, there's a way they will cut it and take it to them. Cut this one and take If you are a so-called archbishop cursing young, young men of God, your time is up. You are a fox. Get off the altar. God has sacked you. Repent or get off the altar. In the last day, said God, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. The old one, they will dream dreams. Old ones, let them dream dreams. You dream when you are sleeping. You don't dream when you are walking. You see vision when you are awake and you are mobile. Yes? And you prophesy not sleeping. We are in that day. There's a new wave coming. And if the old one don't fix up immediately. Many of them don't want to die. They are cowards. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Anybody that goes out and do the work of God, they're going to die. They're not going to die in the sense that they're not ready to take up the mantle. They're not ready to take up the charge and go out there. Use the fame and the money God has given them, the influence to shape government, to give them access to pray for the sick. To arrest devils and put the world back in order. But once the lockdown is lifted, they will tell you to come to their 50,000 capacity cathedral for, for, for one night of the Holy Spirit. Two nights of 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 of, of um, the, the, the 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 storm is over, and you will go there. You will go there. You must be foolish. Go and look for young men, young men. There are young men God are using. God is using in this time. I'm one of them. I'm not bragging for myself. I speak unto myself. I boast in the Lord. What I'm trying to say is this. In the long run. In the long run, things will be justified very soon. Things will be justified very soon. Things will be justified very soon. Mark these dates. Mark these dates. When these things were said. God will justify his word. God will, I'm not, I'm not going to be surprised. They will attack me. They say I'm this and this. God will justify his word. He will justify it. Some of these so-called papas and so-called prophets. They forgot where God picked them from. Where God picked them from. A place of nobodies gave you fame use it now and let his name be glorified are you listening to me these three nights like i said there is no these three nights there is there, there isn't any um there isn't an order it's three nights with the prophet you know tomorrow night is our saturday night of prophecy so i'll take calls i'll prophesy to you i'll pray for you but what is the point of pray, pray, praying for you and prophesying to you and you're not edified I have seen people, see, anybody that don't like me is because you don't like God. Simple. You have your ambition and your wicked motive. If you don't like me, you don't like God. And God always justifies what eventually. I, I have a proven track record of people like that. But may God bless you. May God keep you.